Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and today we are going to be painting up a blue dragonborn. I've been doing a lot of technique videos lately, and I decided to go back and let's just paint a miniature. Nothing new here. Just go over some of our old techniques, and I'm going to throw a few tips and tricks at you while we paint up our very blue rogue. So, brush is at the ready. Let's begin. We are working off of black primer and starting off with the skin, which is the largest surface area on the miniature. And I already put down an undercoat, a deep shade layer of Vallejo Game Color Royal Purple. And then for our secondary shade, using a 50-50 mix of medium blue and royal purple. That undercoat shade stays in the deepest recesses. We are going to be covering up about 90% of it with this color. And this again is our secondary shade, so our base coat is going to go over this color. We are using the layering method here, however, it really hasn't started yet. We have our paint slightly thinned so it can flow easily from the brush, but thinning is going to become much more important as we get to here our base coat layer of straight medium blue. At this point I have the paint thin to about 1 to 3, 1 to 4 paint to water ratio. And you can see we are just starting to define the muscles, especially on the back. Keep an eye on the back of this miniature as I paint it. We have a lot of bulging muscles on this guy and we're just starting to barely define them here. So kind of large blocks of muscles and keeping an eye on where we should be keeping our shadows, where we should be aiming our highlights, always looking at the miniature from a top-down angle. That'll help us with our placements. Moving up to our first highlight, mixing in some Game Color Electric Blue into our Medium Blue. And you can see here, starting to define those muscles more. That first base coat, we blocked in large sections of muscles. But now we're starting to work on the upper portions of those muscles. Starting to define them, working our highlights towards the top to the direction that our overhead lighting indicates. And then our second highlight with more of our electric blue added. Again, defining those muscles. We were working on the top section of the muscles previously, and now we are working kind of in lines, trying to get those highlights right next to the dark shade that we left on the muscle right above it. So we have a nice smooth transition with our thin paint working from our uh, shade color through our base coat to our highlight co color as we move around each muscle. Always remember the thinner your paint the better, the less likely brush strokes are going to show up and the easier it is to blend those colors together. However, the thinner it is, the longer it's going to take. Third and final highlight, mixing in some white to our previous mix. This is our edging highlight, so it usually goes on the sharp edges, but it depends on what you're painting. Obviously, no sharp edges on a skin. So we are actually applying this a little bit more heavily on the face, because it's always good to over-highlight the face a little bit, draws the viewer's eye. And this is also a good color to use on any other little protrusions on the skin. I usually reserve this color for uh, things like knuckles, elbows, knees, uh, and occasionally, depending on the position of the model, we can do just a small little touch here and there on the larger muscles. In the case of our Dragonborn here, I wanted to go with a different color on the underbelly or the stomach and chin area. And for that, I'm using some model color khaki. Now, this is applied exactly how we did the layering. Thinned paints, carefully applied in transparent layers, slowly building up to the color. 
Only difference here is we are transitioning to khaki rather than a lighter blue color. Because we layered the khaki over the already painted blue, we already have some shadow and transitions on the stomach. So all we have to do here is one highlight and we are good to go. So a little bit of white in our khaki, adding a little bit of highlighting. This is going towards the center of the chest. We're not putting it on the outsides because that area is blended between the khaki and the blue. Uh, we don't want to put a highlight on there because we already have a very good transition between those two previous colors. Moving on to the clothing, I'm going to paint that red. And because we are using red and we used black primer, we have to put down an undercoat first. So I put down an undercoat of model color burnt red, and now I'm putting our base coat of scarlet red. If I tried putting the scarlet red straight over the black, it would be very dull, uh, not bright at all, and would take several layers to get a smooth coat. Now one thing I want to bring up is color selection. A lot of newer painters have problems trying to figure out what colors to use where on a miniature. In this case here, I literally could use any color that I wanted to. I decided to go with red. Now the real problem I see with a lot of new painters is not choosing colors. Usually what happens is they choose too many colors. Like every single thing needs to be painted a different color. And I wanted to point out that's not true. And it's actually a lot better if you can keep and work with a minimal palette. In this project you're gonna see me use blue, red, a little bit of a yellow ochre, and that's about it. In fact, while you only see me painting the top and bottom of the Dragonborn now, I actually went back and painted the forearms uh, red as well because I didn't want to introduce a, another color. So try to keep uh, a minimum colors in your palette. You may find that your paintings work a little bit better. After putting down our base coat, I am applying a paint stain of model color violet. Remember, a paint stain is basically a very heavy paint wash. The uh, main difference is that a wash, normally you only want it in the recesses. With a paint stain, you actually want it to stain the base coat. And with red, you can shade with black, you can shade with brown, or you can shade with Violet. Violet usually makes red look a little bit more rich, so use the appropriate color depending on what you're painting. Since the paint stain has stained our previous layer of scarlet red, that means we can apply a fresh layer of scarlet red as a highlight over our previous layer. So we are being very efficient today using one color to highlight said color. For our second and third highlight, we are going to add vermilion to our scarlet red, about 50-50 mix, and then we are going to apply straight vermilion. As always with red, it's very important to not over highlight it. Red is kind of unique when it comes to colors. I thought of something recently that may help you. Normally when highlighting, you want to use a lighter color of whatever your base coat was. In the case of red, think about it more as wanting to use a brighter color than what you used for the base coat, not a lighter color. So again, in this, in this example, I am using vermilion, I'm not using white. We could add orange, we could add yellow, but just make sure it is in very small amounts. Keep your reds red, that's very important. Next comes the very important camo black-brown stage. And yes, 
I did go off camera a little bit here. The Camo Black Brown stage is a mid painting session cleanup stage. Camo Black Brown is painted on anything that I plan to paint brown to give us a nice undercoat to work from. It can be used as a dark line, as a shade, as a base coat. It all depends on what I plan to be using it for later on in the painting process. So rather than going in and painting 10 different little items like belts and pouches and bags and whatnot, uh, all different colors, dark versions of colors, I can just use one universal camel black brown to prep them all. One color to rule them all. Now, in case of the trim around the clothing and the uh, straps around the pants, I decided to use camo black brown as my base coat color. So I need to make the shade areas a little bit darker. So some thin black in those areas is perfect. And then for the highlights, I'm going to mix in some model color orange brown to our camo black brown and then use orange brown straight for our final highlights. Because we are working on very small areas here, tiny straps, obviously we don't need five layers, two shades of base coat and three highlights or more. Just three coats is enough. We have the camo black brown, the original, as our darkest shade. We have a base coat of the mix and then straight orange brown for the edges. That's all we need. For the tassels, I'm going with Game Color Heavy Gold Brown, and remember we already framed these areas with Camo Black Brown, so this is our base coat here, and with the Camo Black Brown along the edges, you can see it really makes the uh, Heavy Gold Brown pop. Now the tassels here are very thick, so we could paint the sides as well, but I really wanted them to pop, so we're going to leave that very dark Camo Black Brown on the edges and just paint the top. Again, a small area, so we only need to use three coats here, technically four with the camo, black, brown, but we are going to be adding white for our highlights uh, both times, and our first highlight covers about half the tassel, really depends on what angle it is towards our uh, assumed light source. The second highlight, much more white added, and this is hitting the edges, so we get a really nice contrast, this very light color butts up right next to our very dark camo black brown contrast as always the key to painting really makes things pop finally we have a little bit of armor to paint and because it's intricate and detailed a wash is perfect in a situation like this I base coated with some Vallejo Model Air Rust, and now I'm hitting it with some uh, Vallejo Model Color Black uh, paint wash. Just to get it into the recesses, this is also going to darken our rust and take away a little bit of its sheen. Much like with our previous paint stain, the rust is now very dark, so we can go ahead and apply rust again to highlight our stained rust. Then last thing is a little bit of brassy brass for the edges of our armor. And again, you can see how important it is to edge the armor. That really makes the contrast pop when you have a sharp edge and it drops off into a darker area. Contrast. So there we go, a relatively quickly painted blue Dragonborn. As you can see, we kept our color palette fairly simple, minimum amount of colors, blue skin, red cloth, a little bit of yellow ochre here and there, and the rest are neutral colors, browns, 
of various states, dark brown, light brown. In this case, mostly just medium brown and dark brown. So I hope you understand the concept that you don't have to paint every single area on a miniature a different color. You can use the same color over and over or tweak it slightly like I did uh, with the tassels here. Tassels were painted with gold brown, but then I used a, a yellowish ochre on some areas like the, uh, the wraps around the legs and the horn. So it's a slightly different color, uh, but they still tie together very well and keeps the number of colors that we use to a minimum. If you like the limited palette look, well, good news for you. I have a video coming up soon where we are going to paint a miniature with just one color. Hope to see you for that one. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. We're going to have leadership the way my old man told me. You put a handkerchief on your head. You spotted imaginary elves. You rock on the porch all night. <laughs>